Okay, thank you, Ken. Huh? Lovely day. So, uh, the liquor company follows the food company. So, are you familiar with the word pulutan? Ken? <laughs> yeah, that's what you eat while you drink. So, you know, after the food, now we go to the alcohol. So, um, everybody, yeah. Okay, you missed that one, huh? Our company, Keepers, is, is fairly new to the equity market. Uh, so we just got clearances and approvals and uh, implemented our follow-on offering last uh, November 2021 in the middle of uh, the pandemic. So we thought we should share with you our backstory and to those who, are, who already know us, uh, a refresher on who we are. Okay, so uh, we have uh, split the presentations. I'll be doing the backstory and the more exciting part, which is the financial highlights and operational highlights. That will be presented by our good-looking uh, investor relations and sustainability officer, Mr. John Howe down there. So he'll be presenting the numbers later. And I'll tell you, it's, it's very good, very strong. Now, uh, what you can see on the screen are uh, alcohol bottles so it's a few hours before happy hour so by the time we're finished you can already start drinking uh, those good looking bottles that's alfonso there that's the number one imported brandy right now in the market it's produced in spain and it's um, it's selling very well it's our biggest driver next slide please that again is tequila but that one you drink towards the later part of the evening when, when everybody's already uh, very happy. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, there you are. Now, uh, before we go into the uh, exciting part, the financials and the operational highlights, allow me to uh, share with you our background. Yeah, Keepers Holdings started when Mr. Lucio Co through the Costco Capital Group diversified into the distribution of uh, alcoholic beverage from his core retailing business. So that's how we started. Keepers is the holding company to three major players in the Philippine spirit, wine, and specialty beverage industry, namely Montosco, Meritus, and Premier. Collectively, the Keepers Holdings is by far the largest distributor of imported spirits in the Philippines with a market share of 74% based on volume and 67% based on value. <clears throat> the synergy that we derive from the Costco group, as you may already know, is through our affiliates uh, Pure Gold and SNR. We have benefited and will continue to benefit from their vast nationwide network of 452 stores. Finally, oops, that will be Jan. Next slide, please. Next slide, Jan. This is how the Costco group looks now. So if you can see a liquor distribution, you have a holding company on top of that. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, what you, on, on the slides are uh, gin brands. So from uh, Gilby's, a, a very uh, big uh, supermarket brand to, to the craft gin, gin brands in, in aviation to the rightmost column okay um, we now go to the key investment highlights of the company uh, that we believe makes keepers an interesting value proposition for you number one we hold the leading market position in the imported spirits distribution segment in the Philippines our leadership extends to all relevant categories of the imported spirit segment from our anchor category, Alfonso is number one in brandy, to blended scotch, our Johnny Walker is number one, to new categories such as soju, we have ginro, and tequila, of course, we have number one in Jose Cuervo. Practically all spirit categories, our brands dominate. As you can see on the list, uh, most of the number ones are in our portfolio. As mentioned, we hold a market share of 74% based on volume and around 67% based on retail sales value of the imported spirits market. Our presence is felt across price segments 
and we have offerings from affordable, that is from 200 to 400 pesos a bottle, to standard, which is from 400 to 1,000 pesos and above. The standard to premium, super premium, ultra premium. This is to, to capture the trading up of Filipinos at each stage of their aspirational drinking journey. I'd like to highlight that historically and moving forward, <clears throat> the growth of the consumption of imported spirits outpaces by a large margin that of the local spirits. From 2017 to 2019, the KGAR compounded annual growth rate of the consumption of imported spirits was at over 25% versus 0.8 or less than 1% for the local spirits. From 2021 to 2025, imported segment is expected to grow by 14% that already factors in the pandemic, while local brands only at 1.1%. In summary, these are the four key market factors characterizing the industry today. Trade is no longer fragmented. Players such as ourselves have established our footing in the market. The taste and preference of the increasingly connected Filipino is evolving. Local brands are confined to lower priced products and are thus unable to capitalize on the premiumization trend. And finally, the base market continues to grow year on year as young people reach the legal drinking age. Amid this backdrop, we continuously assess and fine tune our product portfolio, almost all of which are under exclusive distribution arrangements. In this table, only Jinro, the Korean brand, is non-exclusive, uh, but only because the Koreans here only want to buy from Koreans too. So that's why they have another distributor for that. But uh, most of them are really on an exclusive basis uh, with us. Number three, we are well positioned to capture the premiumization consumer trend in the Philippines. As mentioned earlier, Imported spirits are gaining ground against local brands due to the premiumization phenomenon. This is evident in these charts that show that consumers are graduating to higher quality products that are priced above 100 peso threshold, such that this segment will be worth 50 billion by 2025. The reasons for this trend include the natural affinity of Filipinos for imported products, making it is signaled by being able to afford products of higher quality. This is enabled by their rising incomes, the OFW families, young people moving to cities and starting to earn, etc. Number four, we have an extensive and long-standing relationship with brand owners who are global market leaders. Our success in growing the imported spirits market in the Philippines allowed us to enjoy long-standing partnerships with global brand owners, some spanning over two decades, like Williams and Humbert, producers of the number one imported uh, Bradley brand Alfonso, Jaeger Meister, Perno Ricard, these are the brand owners of Shiva's Regal, Royal Salute, Absolute Vodka, and so forth and so on. And Treasury Wine Estate, the biggest publicly listed uh, wine company in the world. We also actively contribute new relationships you, as you can see here, we are listing the likes of Red Bull Energy Drink and Hike Jinro on board. Number five, we have an experienced management team with extensive knowledge in brand building, marketing, and distribution of uh, wine spirits and specialty beverages. The team is led, of course, by uh, our boss, Mr. Lucio Ko, the visionary who started it all. We have a cumulative experience of well over a century in distribution, brand building, and retailing. Our capable team undoubtedly are equipped to execute the group's business strategies. Number six, the last point. We have a strategic and sustainable expansion plan complemented by our synergistic relationship with Pure Gold and SNR. At the onset, we have a natural synergy with Pure Gold and SNR as they provide us with ready nationwide distribution network with their 452 stores combined. The growth of our relationship is bound to only increase here on as Pure Gold plans to roll out 25 additional new stores per year 
while SNR is targeting to open at least two new stores per year. Our network of around 200 sub-distribution partners, which account for around 70% of our sales, further extend our reach across all fringes of the Philippine archipelago. John, we're going to the fourth. Now you can see, you know, mass displays of our products in uh, Pure Gold and SNR. So, in summary, we are by far the largest player in the distribution of uh, imported spirits, a segment that is growing rapidly in the back of the premiumization of the industry. With decades of relationship with brand owners, the proven capabilities and vision of our management, and the synergies with the wider Costco group, we believe we are bound to capture the industry's growth and more. I'm going to turn you over to our good-looking uh, investment relations and sustainability officer, John Howe, to, to walk you through the, the financials and the operating highlights of the company. John, the screen is yours. Thank you, Sir JP. So, for our key financial highlights, as you can see in the screen, our revenues for the first quarter of 2022 grew by 23.3% to 2.17 billion in first quarter 2022 versus 1.76 billion in the same period in 2021. The increase was driven primarily by the 17.2% growth in sales volume amidst the gradual reopening of the economy and easing of mobility restrictions following the higher alert level in Metro Manila uh, during the surge of Omicron virus uh, from the first week of January to the first week of February 2022, as well as the initial effects of the price increase uh, from the group's uh, Alfonso brand, which comprised about 12% of growth in sales value. Uh, for our GP margin, uh, it grew by 29.3% to 582 million from 450 million, same period last year. Our GP margin increased to 26.8% from 25.6% due to the price increase uh, that we had in the first quarter, as well as the sales mix. For our EBITDA, it increased by 45% during the period to 439 million pesos from 302 million pesos the previous year. And for our net income, it grew 34.3% to 333 million pesos from 248 million pesos. The increase was due to the improvement in our GP margin and strategic management of our operating expenses for this year. In terms of our operating highlights, uh, number one, we had a 17% growth in total volume of cases sold during the first quarter of 2022, with a total 831,000 cases sold in the first quarter versus 709,000 cases sold last year, in the same period of last year. We also had a successful follow-on offering listing on November 19 in 2020, 2021. And the table would show you that our branding category accounts for 71% of the sales mix, eh, followed by other spirits at 14%, wines at 6%, and specialty beverages at 8%. In terms of growth, brandy category grew by 24%, wines at uh, 41% and specialty beverages grew 52%, while other spirits had a decline of 19% in the first quarter. Uh, due to the on-premise channel has not yet returned to its full operating capacity. So that ends our presentation. We now open the floor to Q&A. Thank you very much for the presentation. Now, if I may kickstart the Q&A session with our first question, 
Um, perhaps if you can elaborate a bit more on your first quarter results and what you have been seeing so far in the second quarter going into the election period earlier this month as well. Okay. Uh, our first quarter, you know, um, in the uh, premium alcoholic beverage industry, the first quarter is always the, uh, you know, the, the, the slowest quarter because it immediately follows the biggest quarter of the year, which is December. You know, that's where the biggest purchases, the biggest gifting, the biggest drinking season of the year. So first quarter, when you follow that, the first quarter is always, you know, very difficult, but we've managed to still grow the business uh, in, in the 20s top line and also I think in the uh, in the 30s uh, bottom line uh, higher than the previous years okay uh, the election C uh, quarter which is the second quarter you know because our product is not really that that uh, you know priced uh, very cheap so the election uh, factor doesn't really give us um, a lot of revenue boost but, but only small but second quarter is always traditionally is always better than the first quarter and given the gradual reopening of the trade meaning the on-premise and the 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 yeah, on-premise hotels restaurants bars clubs you know those places that you go to can after work you know so um, uh, they're they're opening now so that will give us uh, extra revenues because those are revenue streams three that took a pause because of the pandemic uh, last year so we're seeing again very strong numbers for the second quarter and also for for the year we're we're, we're pretty confident about that yeah Jan, sure. would you like to add something hmm? uh well the strongest seasonally uh, Keepers has a strong fourth quarter. Uh, that's usually the best quarter for for the company. So, yep, sure. I guess we should be on track to see a recovery this year as the economy reopens with um, easing of social distancing measures and, like you say, more people spending time out of home. That that should certainly help in Keepers' performance this year. And perhaps if you can move a bit to what would you be seeing in terms of your gross profit margin levels for this year and what is the outlook? Gross margins will, will always be in, in the mid-20s. Uh, so the, 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 the big nice thing about our company is that we're not dependent on, on one category. So this is a company where we have uh, key brands in all the key categories of the spirit segment. So there's brandy, there's scotch whiskey, there's American whiskey, vodka, tequila, rum. So uh, it's it's a nice portfolio of brands uh, with presence in, in different categories. So, you know, if there's a dip in, in the margins in one category, there will always be an increase in margins from other categories because that's just how categories in alcohol uh, works when one brand picks up or one category picks up one slows down so like for example the vodka category it's very slow now because gin is is picking up so it means that we're making more on gin but a little bit uh, you know uh, uh, smaller in, in in vodka but the margins will be there and i think it will even go uh, a little bit higher uh, because uh, Alfonso, our main brand, is is really having its tipping point, and, and the brandy category is giving us margins that are higher than the average margins. Yeah, sure, that's very helpful and insightful as well. Um, in terms of your gross margins, um, now if we can move on to a question where it's asked by a lot of investors currently in this high cost um, inflation in environment. Um, perhaps if you can elaborate a bit more on how your company is adjusting your prices to reflect the rising costs and also inflationary pressures. Oh, we're, we're not spared, okay? Uh, the second half, uh, we already felt uh, the disruptions in the second half of 2021. 
But you know, the, in the alcohol beverage industry, for as long as there's no shortage of grapes and grain, uh, because they are the, the biggest part of the component of an, an alcoholic beverage, you know, the other cost will not be that significant that will change the way we do our business. So we should be okay. Uh, we have reflected uh, uh, the effects of some of these uh, costs in uh, in the first quarter of this year by increasing the price uh, in the low single digits uh, because that's also the, the, uh, the level of uh, increase that we have been uh, given by our suppliers so we're, we're we're not that bad and and you know of course alcohol you know unlike food we're priced a little higher so the consumers are are not that sensitive to price i would say so you know if it, it's just a little bit of an adjustment it'll still be okay for as long as it's available mm-hmm. yep sure that's very clear that you can pass on the, the higher costs um, to consumers. Um, next, if I can move a bit into the e-commerce business, um, does your company has an e-commerce business? And perhaps if you, have, if you can elaborate a bit on this business and how much of your sales actually come from e-commerce? You know, e-commerce, uh, there was a, a pickup, you know, uh, an increase in e-commerce sales uh, during the pandemic because you know nobody can go to their favorite stores to buy their favorite uh, drink. There was an increase, but uh, if if I have uh, are the numbers right, no, the e-commerce business for the premium alcohol beverage is in the very uh, low single digits at this point. It's still very small. Uh, why and when we ask why? It's because, you know, consumers, uh, when they buy the more expensive stuff, like those that are priced a thousand pesos and above, you know, single malls or, you know, very old uh, blended whiskeys, the, the super premium ones, uh, they're not yet that comfortable to buy it from uh, an e-shop because they want to touch the bottle, see the bottle, make sure that the authenticity is, is, is there. So that's, that's one problem. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, we are present in uh, all the key e-commerce uh, platforms in the market today uh, to have our own um, uh, shop that is part of our expansion plan because we're the biggest aggregator of imported spirits, wines, and uh, specialty beverage in the in the country. That's uh, one of the, you know, one of the, on our list to expand and grow the business. Yep. <clears throat> yep, sure. That's very insightful in terms of your potential growth in the e-commerce front. Um, perhaps if you can move on to the outlook on taxes on liquor products going forward, if you can please provide an outlook on that and how much as a percentage of your price um, goes to paying government tax for liquor? Okay, wow. You know, the, the alcohol beverage, I think we're, we're doing our fair share, you know, uh, uh, you know to the country. Uh, for, for spirits, if we add all the taxes, okay, like duty, that's when the goods arrive, you pay customs duty, and then uh, you pay excise tax. And excise tax, uh, you know, for this, for our market, we do have the value-based tax, and then there's uh, an alcohol-based tax, which is the specific one. Duty is around 10%. Uh, value or ad valorem is uh, 22% of uh, net retail price, and value added tax of 12 if you add that three, that's almost close to 50%. So what you see on the shelf, almost 50% of the price of a spirit, I'm talking about the spirit category, whiskeys, vodka, tequila, rums, almost uh, 50% of that goes to the government. 
and that that funds and uh, that funds uh, you know eighty uh, percent of that I think if I got it right funds the health program of the government access from uh, from alcohol okay so um, we're you know it's fair what what I can say about um, excise taxation or access on alcoholic beverage has been has been fair to us so it has been uh, rationalized a few times since uh, 2013 in in 2013 that is when uh, the government rationalized uh, excise tax on spirits uh, what i meant was that was uh, you know there's only one formula now for imported uh, alcohol and and also local alcohol and then in 2018 before the pandemic our government rationalized again uh, the excise tax on beer and also on sparkling wines so are pretty okay now the taxes that's uh, going up every year is part of that uh, um, specific tax and that's about in terms of absolute amount that's about five pesos per bottle so i think that's just that's just fair five pesos increase per bottle every year on on excise tax for spirits that to me is okay yeah sure that's very clear thank you very much sir jp and also john for your time today i guess that wraps up our q a session um perhaps if i can pass back to sir jp to make any final remarks all right before the thank yous okay um i'd like to uh just repeat uh we're uh, keepers holdings we are engaged in the uh, importation and distribution of uh, wine uh, spirits and uh, specialty beverages we're the biggest player in that segment uh, having 74 uh, percent market share we're fairly new but we just got uh, our follow-on offering our listings uh, last november and um, we have been delivering very strong numbers uh, in the last uh, in, in few years back and uh, this year again uh, we can see a very good year ahead of us uh, so uh, i mean you may want to uh, give us a, a look in terms of uh, investing uh, sure. thank you thank you very much sir jp and also thank you very much to christopher earlier from um, century pacific food now it's time for you to check out our expo of the listed companies booth as we go on a 10 minutes break <laughs>